they've made two by eight. 5,000 watt slug in PEP, 1,000 watt slug in RMS. Eight hundred watts RMS. And just short of two grand PEP. Let's get on with the show. My friend Carlos bought this from Joe back in 2002, 2003, and this is what it looked like the day he bought it. It's just like so. He ran it for years and years and years, had a dedicated alternator, a dedicated batteries, de dedicated electrical system. Ran this in his truck and then got out of it, threw it in a closet and left it alone. We well, go to go dig it back out here. He wanted to get back into the radio. The bug bit him again. He took the tin off, and he noticed the whole board had swelled up and buckled. Well, <clears throat> thought it was from moisture, and it ripped the board off the off the side of the cabinet. That's what little side strips looked like. Just plum peeled the copper right off the phenolic board. So I went in here and I gave him a new phenolic strip, of course. This is what the other one looked like. Gave him a new phenolic strip. And I started to look at why it was buckled. Well, down underneath the board here, Joe had added these little guys. Little capacitors soldered up underneath the board. Just like so, up underneath the board. As you can tell, they're all swollen, puffed up. Well, the power wire that comes off this strip down the center, comes out the back of the box, was going right underneath the caps. So when the caps swelled up, pressed up on the center of the board, being in a high humid environment, the board continued to buckle. Let me cut away, I'm gonna show you a quick picture. So then all I had to do was come in and make it right. So I pulled out these dead electrolytics, set them aside, and I put four brand new electrolytics underneath there, and I routed the wires through the center of the caps so they weren't getting pinched between the cabinet and the electrolytics and they're rubbing on each other. So that could cause a short, that would cause a fire, that would be bad. So we did away with that whole problem child, and that allowed the board to kind of go from being cupped to laying somewhat flat. So now when in here, the source of all the problems, which is right in this area, I come just forward to the caps, drilled two holes, went through the outside cabinet, added some longer screws and you know, some nuts on it, sucked the cabinet down, or sucked the board down flat. So now the heat sink is sitting flat on the bottom of the cabinet, and that caused the edges of the boards to come back out the edge of the enclosure. So I came in, I added phenolic and soldered the whole thing both sides fully soldered and pretty much from there I was just kind of polishing up the stuff that had been worn out like came along and had to replace this unbelievably corroded relay look at that so we put him a new one in here added a pro diode which Dave doesn't really like to do across the uh, positive negative terminals of the, the relay it takes out a hard voltage spike that can knock out the, the transistor that keys the box and uh, put bigger power wire in it. Didn't really had to mess with the output tune an awful lot. The input tune was a little off, 
But uh, the other thing I went and I did is I pulled the stock bolt out and uh, replaced it with a new one that is uh, made of stainless. So it won't rust like the other bolt that was in there. Had to cut it off with a hacksaw and uh, actually added a crown strip to it. Instead of just going directly to the anodization of the case, I cleaned the anodization away so it goes straight to the aluminum. And then added a ground strip that comes down to the actual board of the, of the, the amp. <clears throat> replaced your remote jack because it was all rusted up. Went through and replaced every single screw in the box because they were all rusted and corroded. Got you back where you should be, man. This thing runs like a racehorse. I don't see a whole reason to change an awful lot on the inside of it other than just those couple things. I did add one single 5 watt resistor. Oh. And really what that does is it can suck up and balance, but it also deflects some of the reflect away from the transistors because it's a direct feed back to the transistors. If you get a high relay spike or reflected spike, it sucks up some of that energy. All right, so today we're working with a 1,000 watt slug in PEP. Come on, focus up, there we go. Five watt slug in reverse and a Galaxy 66V. And we're on 14 volts flat as always. I'm just going to show you drive. We're on 1x on a 1,000 watt slug. Hello, audio. Standard 15 so watts of input. Kick on the amp. And that's the variable all the way open. 2 watt dead key gets you 600 watt dead wall. Lay it over in the corner. I'm going to reach over here and we're going to put her in 2x for you. Hello. Audio. It's 1850 to 1900 watts on 14 volts with 20 watts worth of drive. Variable's wide open. That's the other thing. I did replace the variable. It was corroded in place or welded in place. It was just bad. So I went ahead and pulled the variable out, put a new one in it, put a new knob on it because this knob had been cracked. So, input tunes flatter in a doornail. Audio. Hello, audio. Consistently 1850, 1900 watts. Man, I, feel, I, re I really feel special to get to work on these kind of projects, especially where the, the customer takes this much pride that, you know, when I send him back the amp, he's going to pop it open and he's going to take yet another comparative picture, just like this. And he'll get another 10 years of use out of this box. It's just living proof. If you don't bolt the heck out of things, and you watch your SWRs, things last you forever. Oh man, Carlos, I appreciate you sending this up to me. It's been fun. On to the next project. My name is BBI, and without a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. There's no shame to this mud duck's game. Come check us out, www.bbiamps.com. I'll see you later.